Greetings and welcome to the first episode of season two of the Hourlings Podcast Project. My name is Martin Wilsey, and as we kick off the second season, we're going to start off by just going around the room and everybody's going to introduce themselves. Shay, why don't you go first? All right, cool. Hey, welcome to season two. You guys are rolling over from season one. Thanks for coming back. If you guys are jumping in new, welcome. Happy to have you. Uh, we have a lot of fun here. We cover a lot of awesome topics. So uh, really happy to kick off uh, another year with these two. You guys rock. Um, my name is Shay McGowey. My author name, I go by S.C. McGowey. Because, you know, some of us authors have to be cliche. C.S. Lewis, J.K. Rowling, E.B. White. I could go on. Um, and I have to be one of them. Um, I write mostly YA, young adult fiction. Uh, I love YA sci-fi and fantasy. Although I haven't been published yet in those genres, I've actually been uh, published in YA Contemporary. Uh, I'm a traditionally published author, but I'm also dabbling in self-publishing, uh, particularly this year, uh, hoping to put out a few titles. Uh, I've also dabbled in some nonfiction titles, uh, one a memoir about my late brother, and I also have a nonfiction title coming out this year uh, with a traditional publisher about the uh, 2002 gold medal winning sled hockey team. So I'm really excited about that, and I'm sure we'll talk about it more in other episodes, but really happy to be here, and uh, would love to segue to David. What's going on, Dave? Hi, my name is uh, David Keener. I write uh, science fiction and fantasy. Uh, all my work started out as short stories, novelettes, and novellas, um, working on a novel right now, and uh, I, I'm also going to be publishing something on the order of 12 stories this year in, in, different, uh, in different places, so it's going to be a busy year for me. And for me, uh, my name is Martin Wilsey, and uh, I write science fiction and fantasy. Um, I, uh, oh, I have a lot. <laughs> how many books? Yeah. Eight, eight you books? have a lot. Anyways, um, <laughs> I'm trying to ramp it up this year and actually increase my throughput. We'll see how that works out. And, um, but we're still going to be doing the podcast because it's just so much damn fun. This guy put this all to shame, let me tell you. He is a well, we'll see. I'm, I'm heading on another writer's retreat here in a couple of weeks, and that's going to be exciting. Oh. Um, I am overachiever. Yeah, I started working on the outline for that one. It's going to be good. I'm going to have a lot of fun writing about it. It's a um, sci-fi vampire horror um, action adventure story. And it's, it's, it's the outline's coming out really fun. Yeah, so I'm, like, I'm excited about that. Would you classify that as a mashup? It is a mashup. And that's uh, that's one of the things that I've learned from David. He loves mashups. And I think that um, you can uh, draw audience in from multiple um, arenas for the same, uh, same title. And uh, I think also that this one's going to be very cinematic. So, you know, if there's people out there looking for, you know, options to buy for movies. We'll talk. <laughs> so with, straight off, um, this being season two now, uh, we'll start off by uh, talking about some of the things that we're going to do for season two. Um, we were just making a casual list in our pregame show. Um, we're going to, of course, like usual, come up with new topics um, the, there will be new topics we haven't discussed. Also, we're going to revisit some of the topics that we might have talked about in season one. Also, um, uh, add to the, some of the topics that we began in season one. Uh, to that end, we're also on the YouTube page. We're going to put up some playlists for specific topic spaces, like world building. We had several episodes about uh, world building and techniques for doing that and uh, fun stuff. We can put those all in a in a playlist and yeah, add favorite. topics and stuff like that. And um, as we do episodes in season two, we'll keep that in mind and try to add them as we go. Um, also, another thing that's going to be new for season two is we're going to do interviews of authors. Um, we've got some uh, lined up already. You'll be seeing those as uh, time goes by. So that, that'll be a lot of fun. Um, uh, I, I'm actually looking forward to that. In addition to that, all three of us are got books scheduled for publication this year. In the past, we haven't really uh, talked ourselves up 
too much because we are just, a, you know, well, we're just, just a so bunch humble. of authors that like talking about writing. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, one of the things that is the weakest point that I have is marketing. So reluctantly, I'm, you know, we'll, we'll talk about our own books that we are, are publishing and have out there in the universe. So that'll be fun too. But tonight's topic, we actually uh, came up um, came up with because as we write, everybody always asks me about where do you write? How do how do you actually you know establish your environment? And um, uh, for this, my background today is actually my off. Where I, where I do my writing mostly now. Wait, is that actually, is close. that close? Like, right here is the camera that I am actually doing the show from right now. It's not in the background. That, wait, Marty, that camera is actually right here. And I'm actually saying, sitting in this chair. Well, I'm pointing the wrong direction. I'm actually sitting in this chair looking at this monitor, this glorious monitor. <laughs> So that's a um, green screen behind you. That's not the real thing. Yeah, I have a green screen behind me. It's not really. You fooled room. me. That looks really convincing. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. It really it's, it's funny. Yeah. I had I I've got a friend who uh, um he made a video of uh, himself through the camera that he uses for um for Zoom, and yeah. he recorded a static empty room behind him. And at one point he walks into the room, picks something up and walks out. <laughs> so he's having a Zoom with, with people and behind him while he's talking, he himself walks into the room and picks something up and walks out. I wanna do that. I wanna, well, it's yeah, I, I actually wanna do that. I gotta figure out how to do those, you know, those moving picture backgrounds. So tonight, what we got, um, we're... I think okay. we have to have a public service announcement here. Shay? Yes? I'm not really in orbit. Oh, really? That disappoints me. Because, you know, you're so sky high in my book. <laughs> oh, flattery. Yeah, so tonight we're going to talk about our workspaces. Uh, current and past workspaces, um, just for fun. People ask about them all the time, so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. I, we actually collected a bunch of photographs of our workspaces, and I'm hoping, hoping this works out okay because we haven't done this before, but I'm actually going to share these photos um, with the class. <laughs> and uh, so here we go. We're going to give it a try. We're going to do explanations do of the um, workspaces when they come up. So let's see if this works. All right. Can you guys see it? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, well, this is my current workspace. This is how it is right now today. I have, I am lucky enough to be able to afford a 50 inch curved monitor that as you can see up there, I can have multiple windows open at the same time while I'm working. I'll have the piece that I'm working on in the middle. I will have, oh, a, uh, a name generator on one side, maps on the other side, or my email or something, um, uh, while trying to not be distracted, it is a very good um, tool for actually being able to uh, get work done. And actually being in my own office, I have my own space in my new house, that um, it is great because of that window seat there, the cat comes in all the time and he goes to the window seat instead of laying on my keyboard, which is very handy. So I've next. been in that room. It is very cool. It's like a, an I spy room. You can find something interesting on the shelf everywhere you look. Yeah, everywhere. It's fun. I, I like collecting stuff. I, it needs to be organized and displayed, staged better, but that, that'll happen in time. Um, yeah, you're making me, uh, you know, I, I just don't have that many like items. <laughs> oh, I got way more than that. I have an Wait entire library in the basement that's covered with that stuff. And uh, plus the opposite side of the room, also covered with stuff. Anyway, so this is my old den and at my last house. Um, I really miss my roll top desk. That used to be my main desk. Hmm. Um, 
But as you can see, I used to be uh, a monitor addict um, about multi screens and stuff uh, before I moved to a single uh, large monitor. And prior to the, oh, also, this is my favorite nine foot whiteboard. I can't <laughs> tell you how often I use this whiteboard in writing. It's very mm -hmm. awesome, very awesome. Marty, how come you didn't keep the um, roll top desk in your new house? I, you know, I just didn't have room for it. Yeah. I had a friend that really coveted it and wanted it bad. So <laughs> I gave it to him. There you go. No other reason. <laughs> um, this is the desk that I wrote my very first book at uh, back in the day. And um, that actually grew into this. And the lesson I learned is it's too damn distracting. Have been, being able to have a TV show. Where is the town in Mississippi? Computer, stop. Jeez, talk about distracting. Um, yeah, the distractomatic in that in that office. I could have a TV show on. I'd have my three screens working. I could have my, you know, my cameras on, you know, to show what was going on in my yard and stuff. It was like just too much. Plus stereo. Plus lava lamps and robots. It was fun, but it was just too much. What was the green thing going on there? Is that uh, audio waves? Oh, that was the system resources for my computer. Because huh. sometimes, I don't know, it happens to me where suddenly, you know, my hard drive will be spinning up or, you know, I'll be short on memory and stuff. So it was just a uh, system stats on my computer that I was using. Mm. Um, Pretty cool. Yeah, it's, you know, it, you know, this was back in the day when I actually had a real job and uh, doing computer stuff. This was the lab that I had at home where I would actually work from at home sometimes. Hmm. And, uh, it was real fun, but boy, it would get hot in there in the summer. You say real job, but uh, you're a full-time author now. I call that pretty real. Yeah, I know. I, I kid myself. I, I tell everybody that I retired and I'm, you know, you're busier now than you were before. Yeah, it's funny. I still get up at 6 a.m. every day, <laughs> which is pretty uh, sad when you don't have to. <laughs> now, this is different. This is my home theater. So so I'm one of those people. I have, like, different stations that I like to work on at at different times. And usually there's room for my laptop. There's room for a, a Coke. Um, and there's some sort of, uh, like, entertainment, like music around. So this is me sitting at my desk. And on the screen is YouTube. So I'll, I'll watch like YouTube videos and listen to music and, and uh, do my writing. And when I finish my, my word count, I can go, uh, I can go uh, watch a movie or something. Uh, this is the office I'm currently at. Um, the laptop on the left is the day job, uh, the one that still pays the bills. Uh, the, one, the laptop in the middle is the one I'm on right now. And the one in the background is the old laptop that still has lots and lots of files on it that I find useful. Uh, and there's a big music system in that room, uh, either uh, either the Echo Dot or also um, a, a multi uh, CD player. Uh, this is the Granite Island in uh, our kitchen. It's about 12 feet long, and I refer to it sometimes as, as my desk. Uh, it's a great work surface, uh, and this allows me to be upstairs working. Uh, you know, the wife is watching television, the dogs are usually sitting at my feet, and the refrigerator is very close if I want snacks. Um, That's dangerous. Dangerous, yeah. yes. This is the uh, Granite Island in the basement where my office is. Um, this is just another place to work. You can see my, uh, my Echo Dot uh, on the counter. Um, everything's wireless, so I've got all the internet I need. In, in the background by the refrigerator, you can see the candy bowl. Um, again, I find this to be a, a nice, convenient, comfortable environment to work in sometimes. Uh, also not shown, I, I don't have good photos of them right now. Um, uh, I often work outside on my deck, which is under the trees uh, and usually has a nice cool breeze. The, the deck is about 15 feet off the ground. Uh, the dogs will usually come visit me and then leave. Um, and uh, we also have a pool in the backyard. So if I go down the, the steps from the deck, uh, there is usually a high table that I can sit at um, by the pool 
in the shade of the trees, getting a nice breeze and listening to the sound of the waterfall, uh, which is also a pretty relaxing way to write. So the thesis statement of, of Dave is that uh, I write everywhere. Is that correct? I, 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 I kind of refer to them as stations. Like yeah. I would get bored if I had to go to the same place and write every single time. So I can write wherever I feel like. Like if, mm. I, if I need isolation, I can go downstairs and, and sit at the, uh, at, at the bar that you see right there. Can I ask you a question? If you are like stuck or you feel like you're losing motivation in your writing, if you switch st stations, do you feel like rejuvenated? Um, it depends. It's a little bit of mood programming sometimes. Like for, like for instance, if I really want to isolate, I might sit at the bar here. Uh, I, I don't usually write uh, as much at my desk here because I also work here for my day job. Um, if I work at the island upstairs, I get to be with my wife, but there's a lot more distractions. So that's good for editing work, but not so good for like hardcore writing. Mm. Uh, and yeah, writing, for me, it's relaxing. The, the den that I, I do my work in, it's almost like a Pavlovian association with writing now. You know, it's, you know, when I come in here, I, I sit down with a pot of coffee and my favorite mug, and it's like, I, it, I just know that it, that's where inspiration right. will find me. Hmm. And see, I, I don't worry. I can write effectively just about anywhere. It's just I, I like being in different places. All right, on to my office. Um, so all the pictures you're about to see all take place in the same room. And that's because in my house, I share a house with my, my beloved parents. Um, but there is a, a, a clause to that. My mom really dislikes clutter and she really dislikes my, my taste in general and items and furniture. So the rule is that everything must go into my office or my bedroom or it's, it's, uh, it's free game. She can throw it out, she can donate it, she can do whatever. So you're about to see a lot of clutter, but it's out of survival necessity. Um, this, this photo is uh, the bane of Marty and Dave's existence sometimes because this is my aquarium, which often emits uh, a droning sound with its filter, but it is uh, just a gorgeous uh, micro saltwater aquarium. It has uh, three fish, uh, four fish actually, that you might not be able to quite see uh, in this picture. Uh, if, you, if you look pretty close, you can see two clowns, uh, some coral, that green thing is coral, and that rock in the center I actually glued together but with from two pieces of live rock to make this one big monolith in the middle uh, with a little hole that the, the fish can go through. And um, I've always wanted a hexagon aquarium. I love this thing because if I'm stressed out working, um, I can just take a break and go over and look at something that's not a screen that's relaxing. Because I, like everybody else, you know, my phone can be my pacifier where I can just you know, scroll through it or, or play a game or something. But I like to take a break uh, every now and then without screens. And so this is my, my Zen screenless uh, centerpiece, if you will. Next is my, uh, my curio cabinet of um, very eclectic artifacts. Uh, each shelf kind of has a different theme. Um, the first shelf at the top are saints. Uh, the second shelf down is uh, a bunch of natural artifacts. I have uh, in the middle there, that's a megalodon tooth on a stand. Um, I have uh, the, the lower shelf below that, I have a Roman pot. Um, I have uh, a mammoth tusk. I have uh, suneiform, I think is how you pronounce it, and a clay figurine from uh, a Mesoamerican civilization, uh, pre-Columbian. Below that is a bunch of daguerreotypes. I collect uh, antique photos. So daguerreotypes, amber types, um, I, I have some themes that I stick to, but mostly it's just these random people who I'm not related to that are displayed around my office. So folks will come into my room and they'll look around at these uh, antique photos and they'll be like, wow, who's this guy? Is this your great, great grandfather or whatever? And I say, I have no idea who that person is. And they give me a weird look. Um, but you can I, make I up a really cool story. Yeah. I should, I should say I'm related to all of them. I should be like, yeah. You're a writer. Is... You should have a story for each one of them. Oh yeah. That's... I, I... That's my That's uncle good, Bob. Yeah, I, I have like uh, at least five Civil War soldier daguerreotypes. I should just tell people that all five of them are my, are my relatives. We, we have many people that fought in the war. Um, below that is a, an illuminated manuscript uh, from a monastery in France, probably about the 14th century. 
And then to the left, uh, I have my my it just a, a sliver of it. You can see my uh, my turntable, so I can play music, um, get some inspiration from that too. Here's my fireplace. I couldn't get it to turn on for the photo because my, my remote needs new batteries. But I often call myself a reptile, as anyone who's close to me knows, because I just need heat. Um, don't know if it's just the way I'm wired or the fact that I have poor circulation from sitting in a wheelchair most of my life. But um, I my, my blood does not run hot enough, as much as I would like to say my lifestyle makes it so. Um, and so I use this for, you know, for heat, but also just to... Again, it's, it's a screenless relaxer for me. On top of the shelf, I have an, a, another collection of interesting things. Um, if you can kind of see, there's a painting in the center that's blue. Um, those are, are bluebells, which grow like crazy out here in Virginia, they're gorgeous. But just to the right of that, there's like a gold, um, it looks like a, what would you call that? Some kind of like churchy case with the, with the red velvet in the back. That's a, a first class relic of St. Valentine. Um, I, a reliquary. I, it, is a, it is a reliquary. I didn't want to use that word because not many people know it, but you're, you're very good. That it. is a reliquary. And I will I tell you a, a very it. quick and funny story. Um, in the Catholic Church and in you know, modern practice, you're technically not allowed to sell relics. So what people do to get around this is they sell the reliquary and they put in tiny little writing will throw in the relic for free. And of course, they, they charge the reliquary for hundreds and hundreds of dollars, depending on how popular the saint is that they're throwing in for free. Um, so this is what I, I this is, was the situation for me. Um, I have pretty decent faith that it's authentic because it has an unbroken seal that looks very old. Um, and it is, uh, you know, it has a, it has a Latin label. Um, and so I use this, this uh, relic actually at my weddings. I officiate weddings. Um, for free, it's a it's a service that I offer, and uh, I'll bring that if if the couple is okay with it, I'll bring that to the altar to kind of you know bring some romance uh, to the occasion. So a bunch of interesting stuff there I could keep talking about, but you can just look around and you know have your curiosity. Right here uh, is my chess set in the center. Um, I love to play chess. That's an Isle of Lewis chess set, which is um, it's a replica of one of the oldest chess sets ever discovered um, in the Isle of Lewis, believe it or not. Um, there's, a, a seat, there's a seat there, which is like the most unfunctional thing in my office because I never would get out of it and sit in it. I have my wheelchair, right? But that is there for the, uh, you know, the, every now and then I'll have a guest over and we'll play chess and they can sit in that armchair. On the wall at the way top is my blunderbuss. That is a working gun. Uh, I have not fired it yet because I have to get it like checked out before I do that. But Marty, you and I could do that. That'd be that'd be kind of fun. That would be uh, fun. It it has such a big uh, barrel that it's like almost classified as a cannon. Uh, but it is it is a monster. I just love it. Uh, to the left of that is my cuckoo clock, and to the left of that is my degree from the University of Virginia, uh, which I graduated from in 2021. Yeah, you're making right. it seem old. <laughs> that makes us feel young. Thanks, Dave. Um, so this is my, my bookshelf. I, I threw it in there because, you know, any, any self-respecting author has to have a bookshelf nearby, uh, their writing space. Um, above my bookshelf are photos of my actual ancestors. <laughs> so the daguerreotypes are not my ancestors, but these ones are. And I have them all in one section so no one gets confused. This wall I'm related to. Um, so I have my great great grandparents, my great grandparents, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that bookshelf is special because it is from the uh, Rest in Peace. It is from Borders Bookstore. Dave, I know you know about this. When when uh, the bookstore closed, they liquefied all of their furniture. People went in and bought their shelves for you know dirt cheap. And we went and we bought about I don't know about six shelves. Uh, and I always cherished it because. Borders closed before I could publish my first book. And my dream was always to be on the Borders bookshelf. So now, even though the store is closed, I have my, my own book on that shelf. And I can very accurately say that my book is, in, is on the Borders bookshelf. So. I just want you to know I bought 15 of those bookshelves. To uh, he always has to one up me. <laughs> my last photo is uh, my desk, that white thing. 
uh, where I've written all my novels. This desk has moved around. Um, it's not always been in this room. Uh, I, I, the first novel I ever wrote on this desk, I was just like slapped in the middle of the living room where my brother was playing Halo really loud and you know people were walking around. And then as my collection of things that mom couldn't stand grew bigger and bigger, they threw me into, a, into my own room, which I appreciated. Um, but that desk is very important to me. Uh, you know, I, I wrote all my novels on it. I signed my first um, traditionally published or traditional publication contract on that desk. And thirdly, that desk used to belong to my brother. We took it out of his uh, his bedroom. And so um, it's beaten up and it needs a paint job and it's cracked all over the place. But uh, it's definitely means a lot to me because I always feel like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working and I'm a part of uh, my brother uh, when I'm at that desk. I have a globe to the left, um, which I, I got at a yard sale. I have a big American flag um, because I love it. And uh, another painting of bluebells. In fact, that reminds me, I should have included in my series of photographs just a photo of the beautiful park uh, that I live nearby because probably the only other time where I wouldn't be writing here would be when I would go out to that park and I would take my phone and I could write, I have, I've written several chapters of several different books just on my phone using thumbs while I'm out, you know, sitting by the, the creek or, uh, or by the trees or whatever. Um, and yeah, I, you know, it's an equally valid uh, writing space for me. So those are all my photos. Thanks for not judging. Um, you can, you can, go, you guys can go back and like pause and like take a magnifying glass and look at all this stuff. Um, if you, you have any questions, let me know. Leave it in the comments. Said we're not judging. No, oh, I know you're judging, Dave. <laughs> oh, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I know it. But yeah, thank you. Yeah, I didn't include um, any images of my uh, uh, Surface Pro laptop that I uh, wrote my last novel on. Um, that's what I usually take on a writer's retreat. Um, I'll make sure I get more photos of this upcoming writer's retreat next month, which should be fun. So what are uh, the I absolute like requirements you guys role. have for your writing spaces? Well, I, I will tell you one thing. I, I, I can't demand a door because the office I'm in, um, the opening is just, it was not made for a door. So my parents actually put me in a dining room that they never used. Um, and obviously I can't go upstairs or downstairs. Um, so I am not able to demand a door. So I will, I will sit here as living proof that you can be a productive author without a door. I would just put that out there. <laughs> well, I don't know. I need a door. I gotta I close know. my door. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't use a door. I, I never close my door anyway. Um, I mean, yeah, I, sometimes, I, sometimes the cat's so demanding, I just got to run them out. I'm trying to get stuff done, man. You cannot, you know, lay on top of me or my arms or my keyboard, which he is wont to do. Yeah. A lot, a lot of times my wife will send me a puppy gram. Like if I'm downstairs, uh, we have the we have the stairway blocked off. So she'll unblock it and send the dogs down to get me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, candy Graham. Yeah. That's right. No, I, I, I think the, the big thing about these environments is it's, it's whatever makes you comfortable and gets you into the mood to, to write. Uh, for me, the one thing of, about all these environments is there's some form of music around, whether it's my Echo Dot, um, that I, I will sometimes move around or in my office I have a, I have not only the, the echo dot but I also have the uh, um, a, a six CD player so I can put I can um, play a bunch of my CDs from my CD collection um, and I yes I know about streaming I, I stream music too but sometimes I just want to uh, I just want to listen to a song that uh, or an album that's familiar it's familiar enough to to for me to sort of program my mood, but not so unfamiliar that I feel like I, I, I'm interrupting myself and I have to keep stopping to listen to the words. So th there, there is something to, to be said for, for using music to kind of program your, your, your mood, your, your level of intensity, things of that nature. Yeah, music's very important for me too. 
I actually can't really see them, but um, the I have in this office a Bose surround sound system. It's a um, um, you can barely see there's a Bose micro speaker here and there's a, a center one here and uh, all the way at that end there's another one plus I got two of them behind me and um, it's great listening to music in here it's uh, and I have integrated with my stereo system um, uh, an Alexa device I can't say its actual name or it'll start talking to me right now in this room um uh and uh that's you know hilarious when that starts to happen um but uh i i really enjoy having uh good music available so that when i'm writing and i need i need to have some background music i can have it i also think you should buy stock in bose because marty has bose my <laughs> office has bose speakers my home theater has the whole uh, was a Bose lifestyle um, music system. So yeah, I got a really sweet Bose soundbar out uh, for my my main uh, uh, eighty inch TV. I love that thing. Love it. Dave, are you also going to say that we all need a, a can of Coke? Since yours, all your stations seem to have one. Whatever, whatever beverage gets you through the day. Oh, I like that. That's pretty close to uh, one of my favorite quotes from Frank Sinatra. Do you hear that one? It is. About waking up right. in the morning? Um, well, I, I don't know if I can verbatim quote it, but he said, you know, I'm for uh, a, a bottle of pills, a bottle of Jack, or whatever gets you through the night. <laughs> so I, I think that's kind of what Dave is saying. I thought you were going to say something like beer. It's not just a breakfast drink anymore. <laughs> no, Sinatra had a great saying. He said, um, I, I don't know how people that don't drink do it. They wake up and that's as good as they're going to feel all day long. <laughs> oh, God bless the man. He lived a good long time, so it must have worked for him. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so I think we're about done. Any other final uh, comments about our uh, offices or work environments before we sign off? Well, I, I do just want to say, these are the usual places I write, like uh, other folks. I'm also comfortable writing in other places. Um, a nice environment like Panera Bread, uh, with the bustle of people around and some music. That, or that's, that's a nice writing. Um, I don't do library writing, but oh. your mileage may vary. <laughs> yeah, um, I, yeah, my last comment would just be, you know, make it your own. Uh, wherever you are, you know, maybe you have, maybe you're blessed and you have a lot of space and a lot of awesome things to put with, and maybe you're uh, still struggling and don't quite have the office that you want yet or the space that you want yet, but um, it's valid and you can still make awesome stuff wherever you are. So make it your own. Yeah, I, I would be more likely to uh, write in a library um, for the quiet than Panera. Um, I'm too easily distracted. I'm like a dog chasing a butterfly. Um, between the food and the people, I would be ve very distracted. Uh, so that doesn't bother me at all. Uh, I, I like the bustle, and I, I can I can just let that fade into the background. And again, your mileage may vary. Yep, it's true. It's true. All right, guys, another good episode, and we'll see you next week.